Mountains, Guri Sovia, are located in southwest Poland in the Lower Silesian Voivodeship and they are part of the Sudetes Mountains. They're located in the central part of the Massif. Therefore, they're an excellent base from which to explore the neighboring regions of the Polish, Czech and even the German sites. However, first of all, we would like to invite you to explore the attractions and mysteries of the Owl Mountains, Sowiogorski region itself. We will visit the most important places. We will also show you some of the most interesting cultural, sports and entertainment events which take place periodically. So here we go. The Owl Mountains are among the oldest mountains in Poland. The peaks and valleys were formed about one and a half million years ago, and the rocks, called gneisses, from which the mountains arose, are dated by some scholars as 500 million years old. As a result of geological processes, a richness of metal ores, minerals and rock materials has been created here and in the immediate vicinity. Coal, or uranium ore, once mined, can still be found here. It's not an exaggeration to say that we have the entire periodic table in this area. One of the theories explaining the origin of the name of the Owl Mountains is very interesting. In a document from the 11th century, a record was found in which there was an old name for this region, Yilong, a name which was then linked with gold seekers who came here. In the Owl Mountains and their immediate vicinity, some local names such as Zlotiv Zgorzy, Golden Hill, or Zloty Las, Golden Forest, have survived until today. The surroundings of the town, Srebnogora, are, in turn, regions which are related to a rich history of mining precious metals. The Golden Mountains, Gori Zloty, are situated in the near vicinity. Today, only in the Owl Mountains can we find more than 100 remains of mining activities, which were carried out here over the centuries. Thus, the journey through time and space has begun. The first people made their way to the vicinity of the mountains 500,000 years ago. Some evidence of settlement groups living in the Owl Mountains 10,000 years ago was found in Zhoguf. Very quickly after that, other communities created living conditions in the higher parts of the mountains. Scholars have estimated that they were one of the highest settlements across Europe at that time. Centuries passed. The area was inhabited by numerous tribes. It's possible that Celts were among the guests who made their way here from the south. Roman coins have been found near Ludwikowice, Klotsky, or Mozisko, which suggests trading contacts with the Mediterranean Empire. In the Middle Ages, the Owl Mountains were a barrier and a natural border between the then Poland and Bohemia. To strengthen that border, some small watchtowers and castles were built, and their faint traces can be seen today in the vicinity of Przewęcz Waliborska, the Waliborska Pass, or Rodziszczów. The end of the 13th century brought a strong rule of the Dukes of Svidnitsa Javorduci. At that time, a lot of settlements were created, and the Knights' estates were established on the Virgin Territory. One of the significant centers of authority, fragments of which can be admired in the vicinity of the Owls Mountains, was Rogoviec Castle. It's located at an altitude of 870 meters above sea level, and at that time it was one of the highest castles in Poland. Later, it became the seat of knights robbers, who attacked merchants and the surrounding villages. The castle wasn't extended, and according to records it was destroyed before the end of the 15th century. Currently, some archaeological works are being conducted in the area of the castle ruins. They have revealed new and previously unknown facts about the history of the fortress. The ruins can be seen when going on a short trip from the vicinity of Guzitsa. If you plan to hike the Yellow Trail, you will see one of the unique wooden churches which has survived here until today. It is located in Gzmiontsa. One of the pearls of the Owl Mountains regions, as well as the entire central Sudetes Mountains today, had much more luck throughout the turmoil of history. The present form of Grodno Castle, Zamek Grodno, shows the appearance of an old medieval fortress. Its roots probably go back to the 13th century. In those days, it was then, like Rogoviets, a fortress meant to protect the trade route and defend against Bohemian invaders. The castle was also the royal residence of Bolek II, Svidnitsky, 
Over the centuries, the castle was held by many different owners and it was repeatedly extended. In modern times, it fell into good hands. At present, the former fortress is maintained by the Valim municipality. The gates of the fortress are open to all visitors. It's best to start in the center of the Zagorzy Slonsky, where you can find a car park. Of special interest in the castle is, among other things, a linden tree or a Renaissance portal. It is also worth looking into the wishing well, as well as listening intently to many legends and stories. From the castle tower, you can see fantastic views of the vicinity. Bistritskia Lake, viewed from here, has an unusual charm. The lake was created after the building of a stone dam on the river Bistritsia 100 years ago. Less fortunate, in the period after the Second World War, was a castle in Ovjesno in the Jezonyov municipality. According to some legendary records, its origins could be linked to the Templars themselves, although it's more likely that this mysterious order of knights is linked with Lutomia, a village lying in the foothills of the Owl Mountains. More reliable records tell us that the castle in Ovjesno was built by the Pogozlets family. Over the centuries, the castle changed in appearance. The habitable part was enlarged and floors were added. The last reconstruction took place in the second half of the 19th century, during which the castle tower was crowned with a beautiful helmet. At the end of the Second World War, the building gradually fell into disrepair. In 1964, the castle tower collapsed. Today, the ruins of the fortress are clear of debris, and they are maintained by Huduf Castle Foundation, Fundatia Zamek Huduf. Every year, the local community, in cooperation with the municipal government, organizes an event called the Castle History and Culture. On the boundaries of the Owl Mountains and the Bardskir Mountains, Gori Bardski is the charmingly located town of Srebna Gora. And although most of its buildings come from the first half of the 19th century, some exceptional architectural examples can be found here. Thanks to that, this little town is a real pearl of the Owl Mountains. As the name of the place suggests, Srebna means silver, the history of settlement in this area is associated with mining silver ore, the origins of which date back to the middle of the 14th century. However, the most recognizable symbol of Shrebna Gora is a fortress dominating over the town. Built with difficulty over decades, it was to protect the new border of the Kingdom of Prussia. The entire complex with its central element, the Donjon, could, in case of war, accommodate up to 5,000 soldiers. To this day, the fortress has never been conquered. It's an interesting fact that apart from Napoleon's Bavarian army, then attacking the fortress, there were also Polish detachments of cavalrymen of the Legion of the Vistula, the Legia Nadwislanska. Afterwards, it lost its military functions, but it was used as a firing ground for a while. The myth of the unconquered fortress, the Silesian Gibraltar, attracts more tourists. At present, the fortress, still being restored, is a great tourist attraction. Shrebnogorska Fortress is also a place of outdoor historical reconstructions. From the crown of the Donjon, one can admire the views of a large part of the central and eastern Sudetes and the Sudeti foothills, Pshedgorzy Sudetskie. When it comes to the town itself, we can't forget the lovely Baroque church of St. Peter and St. Paul. In the center of the town, there's also a former evangelical church called Anyoik. Shrebna Gora, after a thorough revitalization, also organizes and invites people to cultural events, such as Majówka Srebnogorska. Following the direction of the course of the former railway line, we move over to the other side of the massif. The remains of the Owl Mountains Railway, Kole Sovyagorska, are an interesting example of surmounting some mountain slopes and deep valleys using techniques of that time. In order to go through significant differences in height for a distance of approximately four kilometers, an extra gear rail was used here. Deep gorges carved in the rock, the viaducts and bridges boldly built over 30 meters high continue to amaze to this day. You can experience this real adventure with the center of unconventional tourism, Centrum Touristici Nieconvenzionale. <music> 
Between the Owl Mountains, Wojcicka Hills, Wzgorza Wojcicka, and the Kwodzko Valley, Kotlina Kwodzka, lies an extremely interesting place. It's Bozkov. The building, which immediately calls attention to itself, is an almost fairy-like palace built at the end of the 18th century. And although it was rebuilt after a fire in 1870, in many places it preserves its old Baroque style. In Bodzkuf, there is also the interesting church of St. Peter and St. Paul. Its present form dates from the early 18th century. Inside, there is a pulpit made in a unique art form. This is a boat showing three fishermen casting a net. The canopy is a sail. On it, there are the coat of arms of the nobles who paid to have the church rebuilt. The shape of the pulpit refers to, as you can read in the Evangelist's text, the circumstances of the appointment of the first disciples of Jesus. So let's quote St. Matthew. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with their father, stitching up their nets. And he said, come. Matthew 4.21. The Bible in basic English is in the public domain. The Bible in basic English version online. We're going north now. The town Pieszczytsa is here. The original name of the place, Peterswald, meaning Peter's Forest, Las Piotrowi, appeared in the records of 1258. For centuries, the history of Pieszczytsa was associated with weaving. To this day, the former spinning mills and manufacturers' villas remain. Moreover, an event famous in the whole of Europe took place here, thanks to the novelist Gerhard Hauptmann. It was the revolt of weavers of the Owl Mountains, Sovia Gorski. Also, thanks to the textile industry potentate from Jelena Gora, Bernard von Morenthal, a work sometimes called the Silesian Versailles, Slonsky Versailles, was created. After the Second World War, there was a cinema in the palace. At the end of the 20th century, it faced total destruction, but it was rescued by private owners and is now being renovated. In Pieszczytsa, it's also worth going to the Gothic St. James Church, or the modern Church of St. Anthony of Padua, Antony Paderewski. Dating from the same era as St. Anthony's Church in Pieszczytsa, the second half of the 19th century, the Catholic Church of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Bielava was built according to the project of Alexis Langer. Its soaring tower is one of the highest in Poland. It was built in the medieval Gothic style. In the outer wall, the remnants of a previous church can be seen. For several years, the church tower has been available for tourists to visit. From there, you can admire the breathtaking views of Bielawa, the proudly rising Owl Mountains, and the towns of Dzierżoniowska Valley, Kotlina Dzierżoniowska, The 312 steps lead to the highest of four terraces. You can also go up the stairs another way. Every year, an international competition of running into the tower is organized here. The best competitors cover the distance upstairs in one minute and 10 seconds. Near Bielava, on the way towards the Voliborska Pass, Pszelons Voliborska, and further to Nova Ruda, there is Jodwonik, a beautifully situated village. Here, on the surrounding hills, you can still find a few specimens of fir tree, and in the forest recesses, meet a herd of mouflons brought to that area in the early 20th century. They only live in that region, and they are its symbol. Now their population is estimated to be about 1,500 in the Owl Mountains. After the Second World War, an old forester's lodge was brought from the surrounding forests to the centre of the village. The hunting house, Domek Mislivsky, as it is called, was most likely built in the second half of the 19th century. After the recent renovation, a common room for residents was created here. The house is also an excellent tourist base on the outskirts of the mountains. Yudwovnik is already known as a local paragliding centre. We are going into the mountains and their highest parts now. Already in the second half of the 19th century, some elements of tourist infrastructure appeared there. An example of this are the observation towers. One of the best panoramas in the Sudetes, however, extends from the highest peaks of the Owl Mountains, Kalanitsa and Great Owl, Vielka Sova. 
so you can admire views of the Czech and Polish Sudetes to Karkonosha with Śnieżka. If there is good visibility, you can see fragments of Wrocław, Walbrit, Kłodzko, cities in the foothills of the Owl Mountains and the Sudeti foothill. The tower on the Kalinitsa was built in 1933 and it's a very popular tourist site. For more than 100 years, the Great Owl has had a solid stone concrete construction. The tower was opened on the 24th of May 1906 and originally had the name of Bismarck and after 1945 it was subsequently named after General Sikorsky and Dr. Orwovich. Already in this century it's been restored by the Piesicki government with EU funds and with the support of neighbouring municipalities and associations. During the renovation works an interesting discovery was made. Next to the foundation, a plaque was unearthed with the date of opening and the abbreviation of the Association of Tourist Organization which had built the tower. We suggest you select your tour route according to your physical condition using the maps and guidebooks. The minimum effort and time, about a one hour walk, will take us to the summits of mountain passes Valimska, Sokola, Yagovska and Voliborska where large car parks can be found. The vicinity of the Great Owl and Yagufska Pass, Przemont Yagufska and Rzeczka are also great places to visit in winter. In this region, you can use numerous ski lifts and ski runs with varying levels of difficulty. The entirety of the cultural richness of past centuries and an interesting history of the Owl Mountains and the surrounding area can be seen in the newly created, with European funds amongst others, Museum of Zemia Sovyagorska. It is located in the, until recently abandoned, Evangelical Church in Ludwikowice Kłodzkie, built here in 1930. Today it's used for cultural and educational purposes. There's an observation deck on the tower. The museum, thanks to its location and provincial road linking Valbridge with Nova Ruda and Kwatsko, is an excellent stopping place during trips. In Ludwikowice Mikuf, we can also admire the remarkable railway engineering works, remains of old coal mines, buildings of the former power plant and the ammunition factory, as well as, with its numerous legends, constructions coming from the Second World War. Many secrets of those times still haven't been unravelled to this day. One of the greatest is the function of underground tunnel systems cut in the hard rocks. Factories of new kinds of weapons, quarters. There are many theories and hypotheses. And those Nazi investments in the Owl Mountain took a heavy toll of lives as well. Will we find out everything one day? The latest information about Project Riser, a giant Olbzim, can be found visiting the underground city Ozovka near Wuzitsa. Or Valimskia tunnels, Stolnie Valimski, between Valim and Zhechka. It's a place tourists shouldn't miss while visiting this region. mountains and their immediate vicinity are also connected with many cultural and sports events. The most important of them are the following. The Bielava Dub Regi Festival, or Tolk Folk, the International Folklore Festival in Jogów, the Cheese Festival in Jets Morowice, the Polish Championship in Trolley Riding in Jogowice. Moreover, Pieszczytsa invites you for the film review and the opening of the season at the Great Owl. These are only some of the interesting places, monuments and events which attract tourists to this region. We are looking forward to welcoming you in the Owl Mountains and their immediate vicinity. Let's discover the mystery. Let's experience the adventure. Let's immerse ourselves in history.